Right, the venue is called the Sherry in Southern Ireland. We're going out on a wreck fishing trip way offshore. And there you can see the radar is going around, and that's what it shows the land. And the dots around it, I believe, are seagulls. I don't think they're all fishing boat. I think Sean the skipper was telling me that this radar actually picks up seagulls as well, can you believe? So they can find uh, pelagic fish like tunas. There you can see, even he's got a phone now. They got everything they can link to the phone. And the wreck here that we're going to be fishing, as you can see, 103 meters, a little bit over that, I guess, there. Um, and he's going to try a few drifts first. So generally with the, with the boat, once they go past the wreck, they like to drift back onto the wreck or over the wreck. And that depends obviously on the wind and the tide. And the stronger the tide and the stronger the wind, the more difficult it is for Sean to try and get the right drift, to, you know, to get over the wreck so that you can drop down. As you can see, it's flat there now. And they're gonna drift about onto the wreck and fair first drift. One of the guys is um, probably using a lure and he's on to a decent fish. So drifting with wreck fishing is a good way for finding it's accurate, um, you know, and you can go back across it all the time, each time on the same drift with the same tide and fish like this super lean. And there indeed is the lure, probably did have some bait on it, because baited lures are really good. And there we go, a nice big fat lean. Don't check it! Watch a drag now, Paul! Jesus Christ, you're right in that app! Paul, don't go so high with your rack. Seriously. I'm gonna watch something hit it before it just hit the bottom of it initially. Just took off. Now this fish is really hard fighting fish. It's a coal fish. And the thing is they fight all the way to the surface. They they don't what we call blow up with a splint swim bladder like say the pollock does, which is a very close relative of it, but a superb coal fish there. They are one of the finest fighting fish and they're perfectly good to eat. There's a coal fish on the top you can see the white lateral line always stands out on the coal fish. There's a differentiate between that and the pollock, which is the one below. You see more of a gold color. Pollock is a goldy color and generally the pollock's mouth is larger. Um, the coal fish doesn't blow up and it'll fight all the way to the surface. You can see it's got quite a small mouth you know, for one of the ocean's main predators. Very, very similar to the pollock. The pollock has in contrast a large mouth and there we go, the guys are hooked up again, we've gone back for another drift and it's like two fish hooked up here to me. Action all the way. That's it. Come in to me first. So there's a fine brace of coalies on the same rig there. And I actually get a bit of action myself in between filming. So when you're out filming, you know, I basically just drop the rod down and risk losing the gear. It's just the way it is. If you either fish or you film, it's pretty tough doing both. Have I got a fish there? It's hard to believe with that much line out. And there we go, another cold fish coming over the side. That's generally the corner. Hooked up to either a cold fish, pollock, or a leg. You can see some of the wrecking rods and reels you need. Good strong tackle. If you're on the drift, you know, um, you can fish these. This one I believe is a sidewinder shad, I'm not sure, but it looks like a sidewinder shad to me. And they are weighted and they're very, very good. You can speed wind these fast for the coal fish and you drop them down on the boom uh, so it doesn't tangle. All fairly standard in some of our other fields. 
films, you've got star drag wheels there. Everybody's got a bit of decent tackle. One is a lever drag. This is a, I believe, a, a rubber net which doesn't tangle so badly with hooks. I believe it is. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, for getting those fish in. Uh, light tackle with a tippy sort of rodeo. You see, super long boom so it doesn't tangle on the way down. Big long trace, maybe six, eight, ten feet long, and then one of those sidewinder lures, or maybe a red gill or something like that. You drop it to the bottom and you wind it slowly about a third of the way up, trying to get it over the wreck, and that's when you get the pollock and the coalfish. Everybody's got different ones. This is a, a lever drag reel, so there's a, and that's geared, a pen geared reel there, so you can come up quickly. One of the baits we're using, if you do want to top off a lure, is to use a piece of squid or indeed a whole squid, you drop the paternoster down with um, a couple of what we call muppets, which are plastic hoochie skirts would be called in another country. And you can tip off with either a piece of fillet of mackerel like this, or you can use squid either way, the ling, love it. So get yourself some baits, always worth backup with a, a bit of frozen squid and two takes of leads guys I speak from experience about losing stuff on the wrecks you can get through it quite well don't be in a hurry to drop down too much I mean you can fish with braid over the wrecks if you you know do snag the wreck it's a pain to break out um, I'm using mono just 50 pound mono because I use that for sharking and here we've got a double hook up um, the braid gives you more sensitivity for a line and bites but as I say it's a pain to uh, uh, you know to break out with the mono yeah. is also a pain to break out because if you're fishing in very very deep water you get an enormous amount of stretch in the line generally about 10 percent before it breaks yeah nice one that one that's a good one that's a, that's a net job there we go. Oh. Get that as well. Hey! <laughs> Double whammy. Now this one I've got is quite a decent sized ling. Um, I'd be fishing with something like 80 or 100 pound leader because they do have some teeth on them. So they're basically a bottom feeding species for people that don't know what ling are. They're a great eating fish if you look. We did actually put a fish on up recently on uh, doing a catch and cook a ball, probably this boat. Yeah, great eating fish, that's a nice size ling. And you can catch quite a lot of these over the wrecks when they're on the feed, providing you get an, a, an accurate drift over the wrecks. And you can use either a fillet of bait like this, just a side of mackerel. And don't forget the leftover piece of mackerel, don't throw them away because very often you'll be drifting and then the skipper will want to anchor up and try maybe for conga and ling, and that's when you'll need those heads for bait. In this particular case, I'll just Topping up my bait because I'm going for I'm loaded for bear. I'm going for something big. It's a big meat hook, uh, about 80 or 100 pound mono, and I'm putting on a whole foot of mackerel on top of another one, trying to freshen it up, get a bit of smell in the water there. But ling will come off the bottom quite a way actually to take a bait, whereas the conga do tend to want it nailed on the bottom. Here you can see there's a sort of muppet, the squid that um, another angler is using. That's a luminous one, takes up some light and. When he goes down, it uh, has some has some light in the squid itself. There's a nice lever drag reel there, so you want. If you go with mono or indeed braid, I wouldn't go much less than fifty pound because it's rough, tough stuff. Now here's a rarity. Look at this. It, this is definitely a sidewinder lure. Who knows what that flatfish is? It looks weird, doesn't it? It's called a megrim. I've caught lots of these off the coast of um, Inishboffin Island on the west coast of Ireland in very deep water. There are deep water flatty normally. But I, I don't believe I've seen one caught on a lure. And there's the boat powering up for another drift. So you just keep going up and down on the drift and hopefully pick a few fish up each time. Well, you can fish quite successfully with, say, two or three like that. Just chunks of bait on there, you see. that It's a hook, a plastic muppet or squid, if you like, or trolling lure or bonito lure and other countries they're known as on the hook is a bit of color i have no idea why you know putting that plastic lure on works but it does indeed work you see there's a nice one i wasn't using i was using plain bait i just use 
one hook at a time on a running ledger and um, picking up ling like that. Now, this time we've gone to anchor. We're trying to find the wreck and it was a pain trying to get the baits on the wreck. But Sean decided this is an outside chance of a shark. So he's putting over a trace there, a shark trace, and he's got a little bit of mashed up fish there to attract anything. You could do this on the drift and we've always tried to get a shark bait out sometime during the day, especially when it's flat calm like this. And you can see there all the particles of uh, fish coming out and the oil popping on the surface. And he's putting an old linen basket because otherwise the shark comes up and he bites the entire bag off. We've had it, it's on our films. Check out the Totally Awesome Fishing Films. We didn't get the shark one we wanted, but we did continue picking up a few fish off the bottom. No conga, ironically. I don't think we have many conga. Looks a bit strange from that angle. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I might get a few comments on the comments page. I've never seen a condom that size before or something. <laughs> Well, you know, it'd be just the job, isn't it? Yeah, it comes back in the top. Yeah, it goes back in the top. Is that a keeper? I don't know, do you keep him or not? I think I'm in, yeah. Jeez, he's huge. I won't take my finger off. Uh, so it continues you can have um, some really great fishing if you get out on a decent wreck it all depends you know how it's uh, how it's fishing on the day um, pollock and cold fish were still coming on the people who use lures and you can also catch them on fillets very thin stretch but there's a nice cold fish there good eating fish as well and it looks like yes that gentleman in the corner has got the wreck and indeed Oh dear, Graham's got the wreck as well. In fact, I think everybody's got the wreck in this one. <laughs> so there's no question that Sean the Skipper got the uh, drift correct on that one because we're right in the wreck. Well, it's interesting that wreck fishing. I like a bit of that and also like a little bit of this. First, first, almost first trip of the season, trying to get the old barbie out. I've washed it all down, cleaned it all up, just having a cook up on the outside and uh, it's going to be a, well, burnt hot dog and probably burnt egg sandwich washed down with some vino. Anyway, while I enjoy this, have a check out one of the other problems I've got in the garden. So here's my dilemma. I grow these lavateras, they come out really nice, but it's very, very dry as I speak at the moment. And you see them just curling over, it's starting to get dry. Now, I grow these some cuttings. These are several years old, they're so easy to do. They're a beautiful uh, flower with them, usually coming out the best about June. But the last lot of cuttings I put in, they're on the slope over by the edge of the fence there. So it drains really quickly and I know they're looking a bit sad. So I've come up with the idea of maybe instead of watering it and the water goes down the slope, I saw up some, some waste pipe, not white, grey or even black, about this big, cut a slant on it, just bang it in the ground and fill that with water. The water will seep in rather than flow away. I mean, it's common sense to me, but will it work?
there you go. It might work, it might not. If it does work, I'll show you later in the summer when the flowers come out. Fingers crossed. Now then, while in the garden, or in the kitchen the other day, we looked out. What, what are these weird birds on the pond? Now, I want to say that those really fancy ass Egyptian geese, I don't think they are. I don't know what this one is. Do any of you guys out there know? Beautiful colours, which I guess is the male, I don't know, and the female is a bit more drab. Check it out. They went in the pond. I went out to get closer and closer, film them through the glass, through little gaps in the hedge. Eventually, I spooked them. Off they went. I haven't seen them since, but they are probably the prettiest ones I've ever seen. So thanks for watching the old Totally Awesome Fishing Show and Totally Awesome Gardening. Um, we'll be back with another film, I dare say. I enjoyed that rat fishing. Hopefully there's a couple of tips there for you. Get out there on the ocean. You can't beat it. That sense of freedom and lost tackle in my case. I just seem to find the wreck. No problem at all. I don't need an echo sounder. Bang. Good luck, people. See you in the next film. Mm -hmm.